I was born with the ideas of certain shapes in my mind as far back as seven. The whole time one's been working, trying to simplify, make more mature, get the right scale and develop it according to the development of society. Hepworth was a leading British sculptor of the mid-20th century and her work was extraordinarily important in forging new ground in uh, British art. In 1939 she came to St Ives with her young family. She had triplets with Ben Nicholson, again an emerging British modernist, and stayed here for the rest of her life. You know, England has usually been a very literary country and a bit startled if it doesn't have a story. Well, I like the story to be implicit in the work. And you make your own fantasy. By 1949, such was her practice that uh, it was evolving and um, she had some major commissions. She really needed a new studio space. A good friend of hers, Marcus Brumwell, saw that the uh, summer houses and studios from the large twin house up the hill were for sale. She acquired it, um, much to her horror it was far more than she'd anticipated, but it gave her the space and light to work and develop her um, sculpture. She worked with a composer, Prio Rainier, and they decided that they were going to develop this garden and uh, it was evolved very carefully. It is a sanctuary, it has an incredible peaceful feel about it. It's lovely to pick up a stone and it's lovely to live with the sculpture because it changes in every possible light. All through the day, moonlight, artificial light, any light, it's always changing. She died in a small fire in 1975 uh, in the Truin Studios. She had remained here um, since 1939 when she moved down with the family and Ben Nicholson um, right up until her death. Hepworth's son-in-law, who became the um, director of Tate, um, Alan Bones, um, they worked to place the garden um, with a flavour of its original planning. It, it has stayed very much the same as it was um, in the late 70s, you know, when it opened to the public. Everything I make is to touch. And people usually do, which pleases me. And it's very important to a sculptor not just to go sort of plonk up and look, because it changes all the time. So the real thing for people is to move with their bodies. If I can make them do that, then I'm very happy.